Hi guys! So today I'm going to be showing you how to make an easy creme brulee recipe. So I'm making this for two people because it's only Rudy and myself at the moment and Jay-Z. But I'm making three portions just in case something goes wrong with the first two. Or if I want some extras. So it's a lazy Sunday afternoon. Rudy's asleep. Jessica's asleep. They're actually on the couch just over there. And I thought I'd make something special so that lunch would be really, really cool. So what you're going to need for this recipe is one cup of whipping cream, fresh cream, ready in a pan, we're in a pot. You're going to need three egg yolks, either vanilla essence or a vanilla pot, 50 grams of granulated sugar, caster sugar, already measured out in my bowl, extra sugar, I've got granulated here, but you can use normal white ones as well, four on top. A whisk, a bowl, a deep dish, and three ramekins. Remember, you can always adjust this recipe for as many people as you would like. So basically, the first step is you need to preheat that oven. So currently, I've got the oven at 150 degrees, and it's busy being preheated for this recipe. Next. You're going to take your vanilla essence or your vanilla pod and just put a little bit into your cream. Give it a good mix. And then you're going to go and put it onto the stove. So basically you're going to put it onto the stove so that it heats up. Just before it boils, you're going to take it off. While we're busy with that, we're going to do the next steps. So I've got the pot on a medium heat. Next, I'm going to take my 50 grams of granulated sugar and add my three egg yolks into it. As you can see, the egg yolks are currently a bright yellow color. What you want to do is you want to add it all in there. And whip it together with the sugar until it turns a light yellow color. You can do this with an electric whisk if you'd like, but I'm doing it. So that looks right. As you can see, it's currently a lighter yellow color than it was before. As you can see, it's just starting to boil, which means we're gonna take it off. Put the stove off and let it rest for a few seconds. As you'll see, the stove is also on 150 degrees preheated for our dish. Okay, so since I've taken off the cream out of the stove, I've boiled the kettle and came through here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your egg mixture and your cream and slowly, very slowly, add in just a teeny tiny bit, mix it in and just continue to mix as you're allowed just little bits in. This is to stop the eggs from curdling because you don't want scrambled eggs or sweet scrambled eggs. What you want is custard. So slowly incorporate all of it in. Continue to whisk all along. And as you have more of the egg yolk whipped in with the cream, you can start adding some more cream as well. That's it, it's pretty well incorporated. Okay, so next for ease, I have got a sif and I've got a jug. We've got the custard mixture that looks like this. And you're going to sift it into your jug just to make it easy to pour. This will also take any kind of curdled eggs out as well as any situations that you have or may have with any vanilla beans. Next you'll see that there are some bubbles on top of this mixture. What you want to do is you just want to scoop it off. You're going to throw that away because that's going to leave a bad texture. Okay, 
What you want is the smoothest of smooth creme brulees, which is basically just a baked custard. So as you can see, the froth is gone now, and you're gonna take your ramekins, and you're gonna fill it up to this indentation line over here, or two thirds full, whichever one works better. Remember, it is not gonna rise in the oven. If anything, it might shrink. So what you're gonna do next with this is you're gonna fill it up basically until halfway full with boiling water. This just helps it to cook evenly while it's in the oven. So this is what my creme brulee currently looks like. I have filled it up, up to that line. I have filled up water halfway through and it's about to go into the oven. I've got the mixture currently in the oven at 150 degrees Celsius and I'm going to leave it in here for 40 to 50 minutes until it is like a soft jelly. Not completely set, but a soft jelly. So my brulees have been in the oven just under 40 minutes. If you touch it, see it's slightly wobbly. On top you'll see it's currently got a skin. Don't remove the skin yet. This will protect it in the fridge while it's cooling down and this is the last thing you'll take off if it bothers you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them out of the boiling water, place them on a rack just to cool down and once they've cooled down more, I'm going to put them in the fridge so that they can set completely before we carry on with the sugar. Okay, so we've just had lunch. Our creme brulees are completely set and I'm going to start working on the sugar, which is a slightly thicker version than the usual one. This is the way that you use it if you don't have a blowtorch and you like a slightly more crispy creme brulee. So this is what we do. Okay, so as you can see, in here I have got granulated sugar. I am covering it up with water, one quarter of the amount of water as sugar, just to kind of wet it all around. There we are. So the secret is you're never going to stir it once you put it on the heat. So setting it up on fire on a high heat. So this entire process with the melting of the sugar is going to take quite a while. So while we're busy with that, we're going to take the skins or the top layer off of the creme brulee salon. So you'll see, I've currently taken it off of this one, but I have not taken it off of this one. So to take it off, it's really easy. Take a teaspoon and just gently scrape the top layer off your creme brulee. This is perfectly good to eat. There's nothing wrong with if you decide not to take it off. But for the purpose of the video, I'm taking it off. And our sugar mixture is currently bur bubbling away. What you do want to do is you want to make sure that you get no sugar crystals around the sides. So if that starts to happen, just take a wet brush. I dip it around the sides to make sure that it doesn't crystallize because what you want is a syrup that's going to become golden and then become hard, like caramelized sugar. What you can also do the traditional creme brulee way is basically taking some granulated sugar, dusting it over the top part of your creme brulee ramekin, and then taking a blowtorch and burning that. Personally, I found it very difficult to do that, so I find it a lot easier to do this and it gives you a slightly sweeter dessert and it works really well. It's quite easy. So let's wait for it to bubble to its desired color and consistency. So as you can see, it's starting to brown now. Keep your eye on it. Take it off of the heat now because it goes very quickly from here to burned. Okay, so as you can see, it's golden brown in there. It's really, really hot and what you want to do is put a tiny bit onto your ramekin, remember it's really hot, and spread it around. The same with the next one.
pour it over, swirl it around, and leave it to set. So what I've done now is I've added some water into this pot and I'm letting the last little bit bubble away so that it can come loose so that it's easy to clean this pot. Otherwise, you're going to damage this pot by scraping this really hard mixture. As you can see, my creme brulees are covered. And they're absolutely smelling so good. So what I'm doing now is I'm putting it back into the fridge for this to harden. So it's been in the fridge, it has settled down, it is hard, it is soft on the inside. And let's do it. Let's crack this baby. So as you can see, it's smooth. Mm. It tastes divine. This should be your go-to dessert. So remember, if you enjoyed this recipe and you would like more like it, subscribe. And if you've tried the recipe, comment below and let us know what you think about it.